We're taking a deep dive this morning into teens and social media. Of course, social media can be used for a lot of great things. We can connect with family and friends. We could even get valuable information from it. Yeah, there are still some dangerous sides, though, to consider on social media these days. As parents, we want to make sure we shield our kids from any threats, of course. But how in the world do we do that? For that, we bring in some of our experts. And joining us live this morning, this half hour, Laura Richer, founder of Anchor Light Therapy Collective in Seattle. Laura, thanks so much. Such an important voice on stories like this. Appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me, Jake. Yeah, uh, quick first question out of all this. I mean, some of the things that teenagers tell you, your schedule at Anchor Light has been full with teens these days. What are some of the experiences that they share with you on social media? As you said before, teens can have positive experiences with social media, but there are also some potential risks. Um, I think some of the things that teens face is when they're using social media, comparing themselves to others, um, experiencing fear of missing out, um, seeing, comparing their lives to how they see their peers present on social media, and that can cause some stress and anxiety. And we know that recent research, Laura, has shown that social media can be connected to an increase in depression and suicidal thoughts among teens. How do you as a parent know when it's not just, um, you know, a teen withdrawing and uh, they're just going through your typical sort of anxiety about, you know, FOMO and things that they're seeing on their social media feeds? How do you know when it's really more serious that there's a significant problem and they need to seek help? Um, I think if you notice any significant changes to their behavior, changes in sleep pattern, if they're normally very social and they become withdrawn, um, anything that looks out of the ordinary. I also think it's really important to start this conversation with kids when they're young. Be really curious about uh, their interest in social media, who they're engaging with, make it a normal conversation so that hopefully they will come to talk to you if they're, if they're experiencing problems. My daughter's nine, Laura, as you know, this is sort of one of the reasons why it prompted me to do this. One of the stories this morning was she asked about TikTok and she's nine. We're not going to let her on at such a young age. But when a child asks you about getting a social media account, how do you start that conversation? What do you say to them? I would be curious about why they want the social media account, what they're hoping to gain from that experience, what content they're interested in. That way you can create an ongoing dialogue with them about things as they as they come up and also be engaged with what they're engaged in. What is the best way to handle when you've given your social uh, your child a social media account? They start doing it and then you realize, wait a second, this is too much. It's too much for them. It's too much for us. But then trying to pull that back is so hard sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a real challenge for parents right now. Um, I think you want to, like I said, have an ongoing dialogue, discuss what some of the potential risks are, address it as things come up. If you notice that your child's too distracted, maybe they're not sleeping at night because they're so engaged in their social media and talk about why it's important to have limits and also be a good example for them as well. They're going to follow your example. So if you also have healthy limits with social media and demonstrate that they're more likely to follow that example. Okay. It's a lot easier said than done though. But as a parent, sure. sometimes you feel pressure. I mean, you feel like mm -hmm. this is the way that kids communicate. It's yeah. easy for us to say, you know, we didn't have that when we were young. We just picked yeah. up the phone and called our friends. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> right. I mean, th but that is how kids communicate. And if you take that away from them, there's this fear as parents that you're going to, you know, take away. Make them feel left out. Among yeah, their that they're left out. Yeah. So how do you, how do you navigate that, Laura? Well, I think setting limits is important and at the same time realizing that social media is a part of the world that we live in, that they are going to engage in social media and that it's not realistic that you're going to just take it away, especially during the pandemic. That is how kids right. stayed engaged with each other. They weren't seeing each other at school. Um, and so it's just important to try to find that balance and it's going to be different for every child and what their specific needs are. So it's going to be an ongoing process of trying to navigate it. All right, uh, Laura Richer with Anchor Light Therapy in Seattle. Laura is going to stay with us throughout the morning at 9 a.m. Parents, join us live on our King 5 Facebook page. She's going to be taking some of your questions as well, which we're really grateful for. Laura, thanks so much. Thank you.